He is the monk who sold his Ferrari and the leader who has no title. He is back now, encouraging the world to wake up at 5 a.m. Our guest on Jab We Met this week, leadership guru Robin Sharma. Welcome to Jab We Met. Good morning, Rahul. What a pleasure to meet you. And what better location <laughs> to shoot this interview with you? Than to start right in front of a swanky new red Ferrari. <laughs> you make me feel at home. <laughs> so why did the monk sell his Ferrari, Robert? Well, you know that book, which I wrote 20 years ago, was really all about living in the world, but also finding peace and finding happiness. And uh, the 5 a.m. club is really about starting your morning well in this age of dramatic distraction. Tranquility is the new luxury, and if we could only start our day. With some exercise and some peace and some reflection, our days would unfold better, and great days live better lives. So, so, flying in from Mumbai, I was reading your book, Robin, and the one thing that struck me is that hey, it's a brilliant idea if you can wake up at 5 a.m. But Robin has that luxury because his life is structured around that. You know, there are people leading busy lives, running packed schedules, working from morning to late into the night. How in the world do they wake up at 5 a.m.? So the Spartan warriors have a great expression, and it's "sweat more in training, and you'll bleed less in war." So someone who says, "Well, I, I'm too busy," that's the very reason to join the 5 a.m. club to give yourself that period where you can calibrate your mindset and work on your heart set and optimize your health set and get ready for a great day. Why do you think waking up at 5 a.m. is so important? Look at the great sages of the world. Look at Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, the great writers. Uh, the great business titans. Many of them had one thing in common: they got up before the sun to plan, to think, to prepare themselves. Because the way you start your day sets the tone for your day. If you wake up checking your email, you're distracted. You're 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 not focused, and that affects your day. Hey, but for example, someone in the world of news, or even mm. in the corporate world, you know, checking your mail, knowing what's happening on the office groups and WhatsApp, it's really mm. important. How mm. do you? You know, not respond to those very pressing emergencies. There's a line in the 5 a.m. club which is an addiction to distraction is the death of your creative production. There's also a term coming out called digital dementia. We're losing our minds because of this. We're cyber zombies. Taking one hour while the rest of the world is asleep to reconnect to your primal hero. To re-engage with your best nature, to think about your values, to plan your day, to read from a great book, to, to sweat. You know, one of the things in the 5M Club is the neuroscience behind sweating first thing in the morning through exercise. You'll release BDNF, cortisol, the fear hormone, as high as first thing in the morning. You'll release serotonin, which makes you feel happier. Those are amazing ways to start the day that will lead to better results, creativity, and productivity. So you've got a 20, 20, 20 routine. In the 5 a.m. club, will you help us experience the 2020-20 routine? It would be my absolute pleasure. And just to let you know, that 2020-20 formula that the 5 a.m. club is based around comes from my work、uh, with billionaires. Over the past 20 years, I've worked with billionaires, famous celebrities, movie stars, and I taught them this morning routine, the 2020-20 formula. And I was seeing Rahul amazing results in their mindset, their happiness, their performance, their creativity. And so that's why I wrote the book. I wanted to share it with everyone, and I'd love to walk you through it. Come, let's go. Great. So the first thing, Robin, in your 2020-20 routine is to hit the gym. So you're saying, wake up, walk out of bed, get on a treadmill. That's how does one do that? Well, the way you feel when you first wake up is not the way you're going to feel 20 minutes later、uh -huh. after some sweaty exercise. Now, why is it sweaty exercise? We all have the ability in the brain to produce BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and what that does is when we sweat and that's produced, we think more clearly, we're more focused, and we feel better. Cortisol, the fear hormone, is highest、okay, first thing in the morning. It takes time to just wake up. You're stretching, and then how do you hit the treadmill? Like five a.m. in the morning. You hit the treadmill, or you start skipping, or you start moving as quickly as possible, because you're going to feel so much better when you get a little bit of exercise first thing in the morning. Come, let's、uh, sure. give this a shot. So, are you running at high speeds, Robin, or you just? Keeping it very basic. The key is just getting your endorphins flowing, and that pharmacy of mastery in the human brain activated. And 
you know, get your blood flowing first thing in the morning. It'll wake you right up. What I'm encouraging people to do in the 5 a.m. club is put mind over mattress. Uh -huh. Win the battle of the bed. People say, well, I can't get up early. Grandma couldn't get up early. I don't have early rising genes. You get on the treadmill, or you do yoga, or you go for a walk, you're gonna activate a pharmacy of mastery that lives inside every human brain. And you'll start to feel better very quickly. And you'll start to optimize your focus, your energy, your creativity. If you're hoping to wake up at 5 a.m., what time do you hit the bed? That's a very important point. To have a world-class morning ritual, you need to have a fantastic pre-sleep ritual. One hour before you go to sleep, meditate, take a bath, read, write in a journal, record gratitude, but no technology, no distraction. You'll sleep more deeply, which allows you to get up at 5 a.m. But given the kind of world we live in, is that even doable, just saying put the phone away, put your iPads away, don't watch TV? One of the best things you can do is start your day well. One of the best things you can do is give yourself 60 minutes before the busyness of the day starts to work on what I call your four interior empires of your mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. Because what's the point of being busy climbing the wrong mountains? What's the point of being busy climbing the wrong mountains? Where do you get these one-liners from? I think it's, it's, it's all ancient wisdom. Uh -huh. You know, they, many of the great religious leaders got up before the sun. Mahatma Gandhi, a lot of the great artists, a lot of the great entrepreneurs, a lot of the great humanitarians understood when we get up at 5 a.m., our minds are most pure. Our hearts are most open. We're not dealing with the residue of the previous day. Sleep has washed away all our distractions and worries and doubts. And so that victory hour from five to six, it's magic. People are nicer. The world is so still. So you spoke of your sleep ritual, but what time do you ordinarily hit the sack? The latest science says we need between seven and nine hours of sleep every night. Uh -huh. The latest science says when we sleep, there's a mechanism where the brain actually washes itself. So, if we don't sleep properly, our brain is not working properly, and it's the number one way to cut our longevity. So sleep is fundamentally important, but it's the quality of the sleep that's important too. How does somebody work on improving the quality of sleep? Well, be one hour. It's the one hour before you sleep. No technology. Be peaceful. Sleep in a cool room. Make sure it's very dark. You know, one of the really important things to remember, you know, people could say, I don't have time to get up early in the morning because I need the sleep and I want to check my email, I want to check my texts, but all geniuses have one thing in common, acute levels of focus and a, mon a monomaniacal concentration on the few things that count. So. Taking that time early in the morning where you can center on how you want to live your day and where you can center on what you want your life to stand for, it'll allow you to live your day on your terms versus society's terms. So Robin, our 20 minutes in the gym is over. The next uh, part of the 2020 routine is to meditate. There's three pockets to the 2020-20 formula. So we're now finishing the first pocket, 20 minutes of sweaty exercise to optimize our cognition, to increase our energy, because energy is more valuable than our intelligence. The second pocket is about reflection, which we're gonna go do right now. Let's do it. After that first 20 minute pocket of the 5 a.m. club method, the second part of the 2020-20 formula is reflection. We live in a world where so few people pause and take the time to think. And so this second 20 minutes gives us the chance to visualize who we want to be during the day. It gives us the chance to think about how we lived yesterday and release our weaknesses. It allows us to ground on our values so we're leaders versus victims as we go through our day ahead. 
So you're saying focus on what you want to get done during that day because what happens very often is you wake up, you get caught in emails, WhatsApp messages, and you're not really thinking about everything that you need to get done in that day. There's a huge difference between productivity and being busy. Huge difference. So it's not really how much time you work, it's what you do. So this second 20 minute pocket allows you to ground in what's most important. You can pray, you can meditate, you can visualize. A lot of great athletes understand when you visualize, you step into the person you've been visualizing. You can write in a journal, or you can simply just think. Like pause in our noisy world and think. What do I want to stand for today? What will I say no to today? How do I want to treat people today? That'll give you a blueprint that you could then use to live out a great day. And, and you think saying no is almost as important as saying yes? It's much more important. Right now, the majority, we're masters of yes. Yes to every social engagement. Yes to every text. Yes to every invitation. But the great leaders, the great heroes, the most productive people are minimalists and purists. So this 20 minute pocket of the 5 a.m. club method, it allows you to center and reflect and meditate and contemplate what's gonna be most important as you go through your day. In a culture like ours, saying no is tough, you know? People get turned off, they get irritated, and saying no is very difficult. I think you can be a yes person, and you can be liked by the world, or you can change the world and live life on your terms in a very respectful way, but you don't get to do both. And if you look at Mahatma Gandhi, you look at Shakespeare, you look at Oprah Winfrey, you look at you know, the great ones, the great women and men of the world, they had such a clear, mighty mission that they had the self-discipline and wisdom to say no to all the trivialities so they could say yes to what was most important. It's a victory over your weaker side. It all changes hard at first and it's messy in the middle, and it's gorgeous at the end. You wake up at 5 a.m. every day, or it's like a Monday to Friday kind of routine? I wake up most days, except when I travel. Sometimes I need a little bit more sleep. On the social media, someone said to me the other day, you know, Robin, I work all night, I'm on a shift, and I get home at 5. What should I do? You know what I said? Sleep. I mean, not everyone's going to be able to do the 5 a.m. club. So even if you get up at 5 a.m. only three times a week, that's better than sleeping in every week. Let's do a meditation for the second ref pocket called reflection. So what I often do is I'll just close my eyes and I'll ground myself. I'll just give myself some positive mantras. We know from Sanskrit, man means mind and tra means free. So mantras actually free the mind. And if you want to talk about neurobiology, we're going to get out of the thinking mind, which is also the seat of our inner critic, the prefrontal cortex. And through some meditation and just sitting here quietly, we're going to get to a deeper state that researchers called flow, which is where optimal performance lives. So you breathe in. Breathing is very powerful. Breathe in through your nose and let go of any tension and stress you're carrying. Breathe in peace. Exhale any anger. Breathe in forgiveness. Exhale resentment. Breathe in bravery. Exhale insecurity. Breathe in love. Exhale selfishness. And you can see if we were to do this every morning just for 20, like just tell me honestly, how do you feel just? Very nice, no doubt. This is also so core to Indian values, yoga and meditation, which is just the Indian way of life for the longest time. It's the Indian way of life and it's also the high performer's way of life. Because we know when we do this meditation, um, we're going to release serotonin, which makes us feel better. And when we feel better, we do better work. I think there's actually four interior dimensions to work on between five and six every morning. It's mindset and heart set, but that's not it. The third interior empire, your health set. You know, if you want to change the world and be an industry titan or a great athlete or a great journalist such as yourself, you don't want to have disease. So 
your, your health set is so important. And then the final element is soul set, the fourth interior empire. Now you could say, Robin, we're busy people. We want to do great things in the world. We have families. We have responsibilities. Soul set sounds very mystical. With great love and respect, I would say it's one of the most important things for every human being because your soul set is simply taking the time to turn down the voice of your ego and that selfish, weak self and to rebuild a relationship with our wisdom and our gifts and our talents. Like we're, when we're little kids, we're born into awe and wonder, but as we go through life and get disappointed, we lose that connection. Great, so we're done with our meditation. We're thinking about building a soul set finding the time to make this happen and now uh, let's head to the last 20 minutes of what you call the victory hour. Exactly, so the final 20 minute pocket of the 2020 formula that the 5am club method is built on is all about growth. So I've coached a lot of billionaires for the past 20 years, I've worked with superstars, you know, movie stars and great athletes and the great ones all have one thing in common, they love to grow. And so I, I often say to double your income and your impact, triple your investment in your personal mastery. And that's what we're going to do right now. Come, let's find out how. For the last 20 minutes, Robin, it's about learning. So at 5.40 in the morning, start discovering new things. Yes, so this is the final pocket of the 5 a.m. club victory hour. And it's all about growing. The people who live remarkable lives, they're, they're curious and they understand that you always want to maintain a white belt mentality. What's a white belt mentality? It's like the martial artist. The moment you think you're a master, you're back to being a beginner. So whether you're a corporate titan, whether you're a firefighter, whether you're a teacher, an entrepreneur, you want to always want to be hungry to learn more, uh, whether that's about your skills or whether that's about your personal mastery. So for these 20 minutes, Rahul, it's really about putting something positive in your mind in a, in a negative world. It's about reading maybe a biography. But is 20 minutes enough to read a biography? Well, you can, you can go more. You know, the whole morning routine I've walked you through is what I call the minimum viable morning routine. It's just a really tight, calibrated one hour to optimize yourself. But, you know, personally, I do three hours. I'll go one hour of exercising. I just need an hour to exercise every morning. And while I do that, I'll listen to audiobooks. I'll hydrate. There's some, some good science saying that when you hydrate, it improves mitochondrial function so you have more energy. Then I'll do an hour of developing myself and journaling. And then I'll do an hour of learning. It's ironical that you talk of journaling in the social media era. Everybody's on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and you're talking about the good old journal. Yeah. That sounds 19th century. It sounds 19th century and it's very modern because you know what science says? There's a, a great relationship to writing and developing and optimizing your mind. For example, um, habit researchers have a term called pre-commitment strategies. So if you take out a journal, like an old school journal, I mean, I brought my own personal journal here because this I This is know, yours? Well, I know you like a to keep it. Little black book? Little black book. I know you like to keep it raw and real, so I'm still a little sweaty, but this is the, this is the 5 a.m. club. And what I do is in my journal, look, I'll do, I'll do these Deconstruct that's me in school and college I'll and that's do, used even now. I'll do deconstructions, I'll write gratitude, I will write blueprints for my ideal day. You're saying lock yourself in, put it down on paper. Put it down on paper and then, because vague goals lead to vague results. Writing it down is a commitment. It gives you precision and clarity of thought. Also in my journal, and again, you can do this during the growth period of your 2020-20 formula. But you can start to write about your frustrations. I mean, I've gone through a lot of great times in my life. I've been on the top of the mountain and I've gone through tragedy in my life. And when I've gone through the painful times of my life, this saved my life because I poured my pain, I poured my sadness out onto a fresh piece of paper. And so I released those toxic emotions from my system versus doing what a lot of people do when they go through a hard time. They repress it, which builds up. And one of the things you write about is the, the possibility of expanding your horizon and learning about new things not necessarily related to work. Greatest ideas incubate when we're not studying our craft. And that's the value of reading strange things. If you're a, a journalist, if you're a 
let's say, a, a business person, go talk to a yoga teacher, go interview a child, go talk to a taxi driver. You know, even traveling, like leave your home and go out and visit new places. Like life is meant to have awe and wonder. It's about reconnecting with the beauty of life in this world where a lot of us are half alive to life. There's, there's a line in the book, most people die at 20 and they're buried at 80. I believe that adults are nothing more than deteriorated children. You know, when we were little kids, we did have a sparkle in our eye. We were curious, we were passionate, we were authentic, we were fully alive. And then as we leave the innocence of childhood, what happens? We get disappointed. We lose that intimacy with our glory. We lose that fire in our belly. And as I suggested before, a great life is nothing more than a series of well-lived days strung together like a necklace of pearls. You know, for those who've got high levels of motivation and commitment and self-belief, doing some of this may be easy. But what I want to talk to you next is, how do people who think their life is drifting, you know, aren't fully in charge, aren't necessarily in happy jobs, not doing very well with their families, how do they take charge of their lives? Let's talk a bit I'd love more. to. Robin, as I hear you say, wake up at 5 a.m., run for 20 minutes, meditate for 20. You know, this Thank may be you. possible for high performers, right? Yes. Those who are primed to excel. But a lot of us are just drifting through life, not necessarily fully in control. You know, they can't even get basics done. How do they reach peak performance levels? The very person who says I can't do it because I don't have energy, because I don't believe in myself, because I'm too busy, that's the person who, who needs it most. I mean, it's not just for high performers. I've been, I've been teaching the 5M Club method for over two decades. It's for any human being. Because what's it really about? It's about optimizing your brain, increasing your energy. How do you snap out of just being the way you are and you know, getting into a zone where you want to be a better person? One step at a time, one morning at a time. I think it was either Lao Tzu or Confucius who said, the thousand mile journey begins with a single step. One step to get up early. The next morning, another step to get up early. The next morning, and then when you stumble, you get back up. You know, in Japan they say, fall down seven times, get up eight. A great life or a great career isn't revolution. One morning we wake up and everything's magic and dancing in the sunlight. A great life is built by evolution. One morning at a time. You've spoken a lot about waking up at 5 a.m. Why should I do it? Someone may ask. How do I benefit? Why should we get up at 5 a.m.? So we become our greatness and we live great lives and we're happier and we serve humanity better. Right now you're radiating positive energy, you're full of positive thoughts, mm -hmm. and you're trying to make the world a better place by getting people to be better than they are. Right. Uh, has this been the way Robin Sharma has always been? Well, I've, I've been blessed to have great parents. My dad is actually from Jammu Kashmir. And he was a great influence on my life, and he used to recite the words of Rabindranath Tagore. And he, my dad used to say, Robin, when you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. So I've always had this instinct to be helpful. But I, I, I'm not naturally energetic. I'm not naturally full of this fire. I work at it. Given that we live in the technological age, what do you think people need to do? Those who live busy lives where technology is a key part of who they are. You know, they're not monks who mm -hmm. sold their Ferraris. These are people with real jobs, real responsibilities. How do they try and minimize the disruption technology causes? I would say this, technology is a beautiful servant and it's a vicious god. I use technology, I leverage technology, I'm on the social media, but I use it strategically. I use it hopefully very intelligently. Have periods during your day zero technology, zero distraction, where you can focus on doing real work versus fake work. When you're with your family, have a family meal, no technology. Tell everyone, put the phone on the table, don't touch it. We can organize our day so there are some times where we can check our email and we can check our texts. We get our best thinking done when we're not distracted. And, you know, a lot of us are not present anymore because we're so addicted to our technology. So you started with the monk who sold his Ferrari and you've been talking about the 5 a.m. club for two decades now, which you finally turned into a book. What happens next? My biggest passion right now is um, moving into more philanthropy. 
So I've uh, started a children's foundation, and there's two missions I have. One is to reduce, as best as I can, childhood poverty, and also leprosy. So I'm on a, a mission to do whatever I can to help children with leprosy um, lead better lives. Robin, we started really early in the morning. You know, it seems to me as if we've been working for hours, which we have. But, uh, you know, my work day hasn't even started yet. So this actually, in some senses, if we can carry this beyond just this episode of Jump We Met, helps you live a longer day. You know, just do more with your day because it almost seems like, hey, half my work's done. And it's actually, the day hasn't even begun. This has been a fantastic interaction. Uh, thank you so much, Robin Sharma, for joining us. I hope that everything that you've said, what you've written, has helped so many people and they benefit from all your words of advice. Rahul, uh, congratulations on the impact you're having and thank you so much. Thank you so much.